We are just a couple hours away from what has become the premier agriculture consortium, if you would, and Dr. Sally Rocky is the one who pulls it all together. So, Sally, congratulations. Thank you, um, you know, we're going to have about five, six hundred people here. We're going to have Al Gore here. We're going to have Dan Glickman here. All these people. And tell us about the focus of FAR and Foster Our Future. What's it all about? So, we're a private nonprofit organization called the Foundation for Food and Agriculture Research. And the idea of our foundation is to promote uh, innovation in agricultural sciences and do it through pirate private public partnerships. So it's really a wonderful opportunity for us to work with all sorts of organizations and groups from around the world who are interested in agricultural sciences to have them apply to farmers and ranchers across the country and across the world. So with that um, as, a, as a foundation, you know, that's a big issue to, to try to deal with. Um, what do you see happening in, in the future? Um, as, we, as we keep on seeing more and more attention for sustainability globally, more and more issues as it relates to the weather. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so what should there's many, doing? many yeah. challenges that are facing yeah. agriculture right now, including a changing climate, including changing consumer demands. And one of the ways that we can keep up with this is to provide farmers and ranchers with the newest and greatest technologies and innovations that are going to help, help them not only be resilient in the face of climate change, but also be able to meet the consumer demands that we have. Uh, consumers are very interested in the food that they eat, not only in what is in the food, but also how it is produced. So this combination of great science together with having that science applied on in the field can really make a difference in people's lives. So when we look at consumers, um, the problem is that a lot of consumers go on Google and they type in sustainability or, or whatever they type in, and 50% of what they get back is right and 50% is wrong. So what's the role of FAR and U.S. farmers and ranchers um, to, to really make sure that the information that the consumer is getting is accurate? The best thing we can do is really conduct high level science that's going to provide us with that evidence that we need to tell a story. So it's true, consumers hear all sorts of information on all sides, it's often hard to interpret that information. So our job is really help consumers interpret the scientific basis for what we do and the practices that are, are um, out in the field by, by farmers. And we can do that, the more that we engage consumers at the onset of what we do to understand what they desire, the more that we can engage with farmers and ranchers as we're conducting the research, the more clear I think it will become to consumers of how agriculture does its business and how their food is produced. What are you hoping to hear from uh, Vice President Al Gore tonight? Well, one of the greatest um, uh, challenges we face as an agriculture community is climate change. And climate change really affects the agricultural sector more than any other sector. And we've seen the changes in weather that have happened, particularly in the last 10 years, and it's really dramatic for our community. So not only do we think, though, that agriculture is impacted by climate change, we also think that climate change could be a, a solution. And Al Gore is very interested in climate. He's also very interested in regenerative agriculture as a solution to climate change. So I think that's what we'll hear tonight. So you mentioned about science, you mentioned farmers and ranchers. How should, in, in the ideal world, how should scientists and farmers and ranchers be working together? Yeah, it's all about co-creation. So it's really about them talking together. What are the issues that farmers are facing? How can science contribute to those issues? And really co-creating the kind of projects and science that needs to be done to answer the questions and have that work be applied as readily as possible. So you talk to both scientists and farmers and ranchers. Um, what is that communication like? Uh, are both sides very open to talking to each other? I think they're both very open. It's all, uh, sometimes not a natural connection, so we do everything we can to try to connect farmers, whether it be through Extension, which is our really fabulous uh, network of of people across the country that take research and translate it to farmers, or whether we directly work with farmers on projects. Um, I think it can always be improved, and I think the, uh, the best solution there is to get farmers in at the onset of the science that's going to impact what they do. And you being a scientist yourself, 
helps because you can really you know understand the language because mm -hmm. I want to assume that at, at times you know farmers and ranchers speak a very different language right. than a scientist does. Absolutely and I worked in cooperative extension when I was in graduate school. I'm a scientist and I've worked right. for the Department of Agriculture for 19 years so I sort of bridge both what's happened in farming and what's happened in science. I also was with the, the National you know, Institutes yes. of Health yeah. so I bridge that health agriculture uh, nexus which is really really important right now. So let's talk about this on a global scale. Um, how do we bring this, you mentioned that you know, other countries are going to be here and, and so on. How do we bring this to a, a global scale? Well, the issues facing agriculture are common, whether it be in the United States or whether it be in, uh, in, in, in Ghana or Kenya and Africa or in Asia. Um, but one of the issues is that when we develop new technologies that impact farmers, we have to make sure that it's scalable across uh, these other regions. Because oftentimes when we're talking about particularly developing countries, they are a lot of small holders and, and farmers with, with um, subsistence farmers who are farming for, to feed their families. So those issues are a lot different. Sometimes technological solutions won't scale. So we want to find those kind of solutions that will scale rapidly. It also means working with partners globally. So we do work with many organizations around the world to understand all of the issues of agriculture on a global scale. How urgent is this effort? Very urgent. I mean, uh, we're, we really feel very much, particularly with climate changing so rapidly, that we don't, we, if we don't take the technological advancements now and really um, amp them up, uh, we're going to fall behind. So we need to do it now, and uh, we need to get those solutions out into the field. Um, on the podcast, we talk to a lot of farmers, and most of the farmers that I talk to always talk about how agriculture is one of the major solutions to yes. climate change. It is. And, and explain that a little bit for me. So um, if you think about climate change, it's caused by greenhouse gas emissions. There's three kinds of greenhouse gas emissions, carbon, nitrous oxide, and methane. And methane is produced from uh, cattle and other animals and manure, and, and same with nitrous, nitrous oxide and with fertilizers. And then carbon, of course, is produced um, uh, by emissions from all sorts of different sectors. But Imagine this, the most powerful machinery we have for taking carbon out of the atmosphere is a plant and soil. And so agriculture uh, and farmers and ranchers who are the, our greatest stewards of our land around the world, the largest number of stewards of, uh, of the land, are in a position, if they, they practice climate smart practices, then they will be able to sequester more carbon, reduce methane and nitrous oxide emissions, and really be heroes in this effort to stem or to reverse climate change. So now I'm gonna ask you to look into your crystal ball. Um, what does is, what is the agriculture world look like in 10 years? Based on everything that FAR is doing, based mm -hmm. on everything that you hear farmers, ranchers, and scientists doing, are we, going to pull this off or are we going to be able to reverse uh, what's, what's going on? Well, I will say that we really absolutely believe that we can have climate smart practices on every farm and ranch around the country and then hopefully around the world. As far as science, we hope that all of these new practices will be based on really sound science that we've done that's going to be um, readily available and applied as quickly as possible. We hope that we will have reversed climate change in 10 years, but we definitely need to stem it. So um, it's a matter of not only stopping the increase in temperature or the increase in, in emissions, but also trying to have the world go back to the place where it was before. And putting together this event is a great great step for all of agriculture. So thank you so much thank for you. doing this. Thank and, you. And as always, thank you for being on Farm Food Facts. Thanks very much.